Our next speaker is uh, Andres Kalsik. So he is currently a research scientist in the Bosch Center for AI, a colleague of us, uh, very close to us actually. So it's definitely a pleasure to have him here with us. And he's gonna talk about optimal control on Riemannian manifold. So Andres, the stage is yours. Uh, thank you, Lionel, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so as Lionel mentioned, I am with the Bosch Center for AI as well. And uh, I will talk about uh, my work on optimal control on Riemannian manifolds, uh, specific specifically focusing on robotics topics. So my uh, presentation is gonna be uh, taking place in <clears throat> two parts. First, I would like to tell you about the motivation, in general, why we should care about uh, in general, control on Riemannian manifolds. Um, then I will go a little bit into the gist of it, uh, how to make it work. It's actually quite simple as you are, uh, as long as you're consistent with your uh, basic setup. Um, then I'm gonna talk about uh, PD control, which is pretty easy to implement. And I show you that this is uh, uh, a very nice uh, control algorithm even on Riemannian manifolds. And in the second part of my talk, I will talk about mostly on, about optimal control and how we can still uh, uh, implement very popular methods such as the iterative uh, IQC on many manifolds quite easily. And then uh, for the, uh, just a small disclaimer, I will consider only the discrete time case uh, and the finite horizon setup, which is very popular and um, important for robotics. But uh, I believe that the techniques that uh, uh, I will uh, show you today can be easily applied to other settings as well. Um, okay, um, so first of all, uh, a motivating example why we should care about control on Riemannian manifolds. Uh, consider the very popular pendulum example. Um, the pendulum is, uh, as you can see on the right side, it's a, it's a rod. At the end of the rod, there is a ball, uh, and uh, it is attached to a fixed surface uh, using the motor, and the motor can exert some uh, torque which then uh, produces some angular acceleration uh, for the joint angle. And there's also a damping, uh, which is proportional to the uh, joint velocity. And then the state, let's consider for now the state to be this theta angle, uh, which is just a deviation from this uh, downwards position. And then uh, we can write up the pendulum dy uh, dynamics easily. And uh, there are uh, the three terms, the gravity, damping, and the control. And uh, as I mentioned, let's consider the theta angle uh, to be the, the, the deviation from this downwards position. And let's consider for now the angle to be between minus pi and pi. Uh, and both of this minus pi and pi are this uh, upward uh, position. And um, let's consider the target value where we want to control the pendulum to uh, around the zero angle, so down here at the downwards position. And then you decide uh, uh, to uh, use the PD controller, for example, and uh, uh, there is uh, an error measure uh, about the distance to the target angle, and you also want to regulate the velocity. And then you choose the P and the D gains, um, some positive values, and then if you implement this uh, control algorithm in your computer, you uh, pretty easily see the following uh, state uh, trajectory. I started my state around 0 0.5, around this position, and you can see it's uh, regulated around zero uh, theta angles at the downwards position uh, pretty quickly. Also, we had some velocity increase in the, in the beginning, and then it's also regulated to zero. And this is the control signal that my PD controller generated, and we can also see that the measure of error, the deviation from downwards position goes to zero. So if everything works out, then uh, why should we even care? And then uh, I asked the question, okay, let's change this one thing in this whole control problem, the target uh, theta angle, and let's change it to the upwards position. And then if, uh, if I change it to the upwards position, so that means I wanna balance uh, around uh, um, up, upward balance uh, the road. In that case, uh, with, the, with the previous control uh, method, we end up with this state trajectory. Uh, as you can see, as soon as the, uh, the theta angle reaches uh, pi, it uh, switches to minus pi, and uh, this leads to a very high uh, control effort, and basically the whole row starts spinning around. And again, I didn't do anything, I just changed the, the target uh, uh, angle that we need to control to. 
So with this state representation, we can say that this is an unstable reference. And uh, this is clearly a shortcoming of my state representation. So you might uh, ask, okay, but hey, I can fix it, right? And it's true, you can fix it pretty easily for this case. What you can also do is uh, incorporate some logic. So for example, as soon as uh, we are on the left side, so our measure is negative uh, of the data angle, then we want to regulate to the minus uh, of the target angle. While we, if we're on the right side, on the positive side, then we uh, keep the same uh, uh, objective. And then it uh, is true in this case, everything will work out and you have nothing to do. However, uh, designing your controller for this corner cases becomes very tedious, especially for more complicated manifolds, you have much more uh, uh, of such corner cases. And also optimization uh, or uh, some continuous optimization with this kind of functions is, is impossible. Um, then uh, an another solution you might uh, offer is to change the zero state to be near the upwards position now. So near the zero state, in this case, of course, the, uh, the control will work perfectly run up here, but then what happens if I want to control uh, to the downwards position? So again, this, this is not a, not a global uh, solution. Uh, what you can also do on the other hand, and this is, I think, the way we should go, is to we change the state representation to this cosinus uh, of uh, L times, uh, sorry, I missed the L, times cosinus theta and sinus theta, and it is nothing else but the position in this 2D plane of the, um, of the mass at the end of the road. And this is nothing else uh, but uh, uh, S1 manifold uh, embedded in this uh, R2 ambient space. And this is the, if you change to this uh, state representation, the measure of error in the controller will become smooth and you don't have to worry about any corner cases or anything else, everything will just work. And uh, so the remaining ways uh, we can design uh, global controllers without any handcrafted logic or, or, or workaround solutions. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you probably have, uh, you know it by now that many manifolds are not vector spaces in general. Uh, the big question is then how do we do control uh, them? And uh, as a teaser, let me just show you the, how we design a Riemann MPD controller. And our first move is to change the state representation to be on the S1 manifold. So instead of the theta angle, we, uh, we are directly optimizing over this S1 manifold, which you can see here on the right side. And uh, what we have at a given point on the manifold X is the tangent space defined there. And in this tangent space, we can uh, use the logarithmic map to measure the deviation from the start uh, from the target uh, state X uh, hat. And this is the, this, uh, this measure can be uh, defined in this tangent space. And the tangent space is already a vector space, thus we can execute our computations there. And we can also define the, uh, the tangent space uh, velocity as X dot uh, which in ambient space, which is just a uh, uh, theta dot in the uh, tangent space. And uh, the controller itself, how it looks like, uh, this is the previous case the, on the left side, you can see this is what we used before. And on the right side, this is what I propose to use. Uh, and the only thing that we changed here is this distance measure to the target state, which uh, will be now the logarithmic map. And if I uh, uh, replace that, then uh, uh, this, this is going to be a well-defined uh, distance measure at any point uh, on the manifold. And I create the a small demo uh, for you, and we can check if uh, this indeed works. Um, I developed uh, uh, this, this uh, small Python package that we're going to share with you. And um, I, did, I implemented all these uh, PD control techniques uh, manifolds and uh, some of these optimal control uh, methods. and uh, I would like to just show you how easy it is to uh, implement or, or use these this techniques. First of all, uh, I would consider the standard PD controller uh, for the pendulum. Um, I change some integration, uh, I choose some integration time. I uh, initiate uh, the dynamics that you have shown before, I choose a time horizon of 250 and the target uh, theta angle of, uh, at the upright position. Um, then uh, I define my PD controller uh, and also the cost that measures the deviation, but this is just for logging. I set the PFD gains um, of, the, uh, of the controller. I set my initial state. 
um, and I give an initial velocity. So here the state representation is the, the sphere manifold, and I give an initial velocity, a large initial velocity to ensure that uh, the, the pendulum will flip over at the top um, and the control is unstable. And then here, I just roll out my trajectory using the controller from the starting state. And the rest is just logging. So if we run this, uh, you can see this uh, behavior that I mentioned before. As soon as we reach pi, the controller goes unstable and uh, we have this uh, unwanted behavior. But now let's change to um, the S1 state. So we're gonna directly define the controller in the tangent space of my uh, current uh, S1 state. Uh, just as before, uh, just as I mentioned before, this is our control law. And the only thing I change now is the PD controller, which is now not on the Euclidean manifold, uh, Euclidean space, but on the defined on the Riemannian uh, manifold. And that's the only thing I change. Everything else stays the same. And in this case, if I run this controller, you see everything works out smoothly. And as soon as we reach the top uh, position, we can uh, the controller doesn't go unstable and uh, nicely uh, converges to the final solution. So this is great. Uh, everything seems to uh, work out. Uh, and uh, I also created another uh, example for you just to show that uh, making a circle actually with a pendulum going from the zero angle, so from the downwards position to the right, to the top, the uh, left side and down again. So making a full circle uh, with this controller is very easy to do. And as you can see, the heat angle, which is the blue, uh, nicely converges uh, to the close to the optimal solution. And uh, uh, we also have the, the velocity goes down smoothly at the, these way points and, and everything is correct. The only shortcoming of the speedy controller is that this initial big spike uh, when we change the, the when we change the waypoint where we want to go to, and this is an unwanted behavior, but uh, yeah, that's how the PD controller works. Um, now, uh, one thing I've, I we didn't discuss is that what is this trajectory rollout? That means the how do we how do we reach the next state, for example? And to understand that, I would like to introduce you some. Uh, some, some some more details about how we choose a basis on this Riemannian manifold. Because as you have seen uh, so far, everything that we want to do in this uh, uh, control is to use tangent spaces and tangent space vectors for computation. And to understand and define the basis, uh, consider the S1 manifold, which is embedded in this R2 ambient space. And uh, uh, we can, at any point on the manifold, we have a definition for the tangent space. Uh, and in this tangent space, we can uh, choose a, a basis. Uh, we call it B0, and this is a unit vector. And then any, uh, any variable defined in the tangent space, for example, here we have this V, uh, can be then uh, defined also in the ambient space using an ambient space vector, this V0, uh, so VO uh, ambient. And uh, for example, if the, this is my unit vector B0, then V is around minus one. In this case, uh, this vector will point uh, backwards towards the uh, one zero direction and the uh, uh, basis is defined as minus one zero. So it points to the left. And uh, this way we can always go back and forth between ambient space and uh, tangent space uh, variables. And we can uh, define the, this operations going back and forth uh, with this uh, simple computations. And uh, notice that the, the tangent space in this case is a R1 submanifold embedded in this R2 space. So uh, the tangent, so the tangent space variable will be a one-dimensional uh, variable, while the ambient space will be a two-dimensional vector. Um, and then we can also uh, redefine uh, or parallel transport, in other uh, words, the basis at other points on the manifold uh, using the parallel transport operation. And then this basis will be also defined there. And uh, if we, for example, parallel transport this ambient vector, then we can also recover local variables. And while I mentioned to you, this is that it's it's very easy to uh, um, implement control algorithms if you consider optimization and control dry, directly in the tangent spaces. Um, in the following, uh, what I'll be considering is uh, I would like to, uh, in general, control a state. Uh, 
uh, which is which exists on the manifold. And uh, we consider its time derivatives uh, as x dot and others also uh, be part of the uh, tangent space of the state at that manifold. Sorry, this should be Tx of m. And uh, we also consider other variables such as controls uh, defined in this manifold. And in this way, uh, as soon as the state changes and uh, if we parallel transport uh, uh, the variable, then our computation will remain consistent. So how does this play out for rolling out the dynamics? So let's uh, consider this example. Here we have a manifold um, and uh, here we have two states, uh, xt and xt plus one, uh, which can be part of a control uh, uh, rollout. And uh, you can see the two corresponding tangent spaces. And as uh, we discussed before, we have this uh, basis uh, defined. And in this case, this is a, a, a two-dimensional uh, plane. Uh, and we defined, so we have two uh, basis vectors here. And uh, these, are, these are consistently defined in every state of the, uh, of the trajectory. Um, so first what I will do, I will uh, define a tangent space position, which is nothing else but deviation of, uh, from, the, from the center of the tangent space or the, or the state of the manifold. And uh, we consider, we can assume to have a manifold dynamics, which gives me the next state and the next velocity, uh, given the current state, the current velocity, and the control. Um, <clears throat> and in the following, I will uh, assume that we have a tangent space equivalent for this. And uh, I will show you an example how you can uh, get to such a dynamics equation. Uh, but it gives me, uh, which gives me the next uh, position. So the position of the next state in the current tangent space, so this is this v t plus one, and uh, the next velocity, which is x uh, dot t plus one. And uh, this takes as input the, the position, uh, which is center, centralized here, so this is zero here. We have some uh, velocity and the control defined in this tangent space. So after you compute the dynamics in this tangent space, you just have to progress to the next one. and use, of course, the exponential map uh, to uh, get the next manifold state. And uh, you have to also parallel transport the velocity. This is a very important operation when you control because this uh, is part of the dynamics and this will uh, have to be also defined here consistently. And we use this parallel transport operation. And if you take a close look, uh, this, uh, the angle between this uh, vector and the basis will remain constant if after the parallel transportation. Um, but in the ambient space, they obviously are not uh, parallel. Um, and uh, you can see also that uh, the, we will consider the controls to be defined at the tangent space uh, of the state where uh, at the current time. Okay, so this is how I can roll out my uh, uh, trajectory. Uh, and now let's consider an example uh, about the pendulum. So in the pendulum case, uh, we already talked about uh, uh, how to define the PD controller. Uh, so this is the equation for it. And uh, here I show you a small trick when you go, ahead, go back and forth between tangent space and ambient space and define this uh, control uh, uh, signal. And uh, just as a reminder, this is, uh, this is uh, embedded in the tangent space of the manifold, which means in the pendulum case, this is a one dimension uh, submanifold. Then we can compute the tangent space dynamics and uh, uh, in, so first of all, we, con uh, we compute the uh, acceleration, then we integrate it to get the new velocity. Then we can compute the tangent space position update. This will be the, the position of the next state in my current tangent space. And after that, uh, I do the computations that bring me to the, uh, to the next uh, state on the manifold. This is what you have seen in the previous slide. And that's it. So given the control and my current state, you can compute the next state easily. And these are very simple, tractable operations. And in the collab example, um, all these uh, computations are executed in this rollout uh, trajectory uh, function, which repeatedly applies this computation that we have seen before. This is how I got my uh, trajectory. Uh, OK, um, so. I would say this was the first part uh, of my presentation where I just wanted to introduce you to a very intuitive way of handling control on Riemannian manifolds and uh, how, you can, how you can use it in different, uh, uh, in, for example, in the pendulum example. 
I think this is this would be already a lot of information for you in, in order to implement your own uh, control algorithm. Uh, but I would like to uh, move on and focus more on the optimal control, which is uh, relevant for robotics. And I want to show you that also actually optimization on uh, of trajectories on many manifolds is relatively easy to apply. Um, so optimal control, or in other words, a PD control is not enough. Uh, by robot, the optimal control is really popular in robotics because we can define more uh, complex uh, tasks and uh, we can still keep uh, we can still compute an optimal uh, control signal for that. And the general problem is defined as follows: given uh, some initial state and the dynamics constraint, uh, find the optimal control uh, sequence from zero to uh, t minus one. Uh, so here again, I'm considering the finite horizon setup, and my uh, cost is defined uh, at every required uh, search uh, is a sum of uh, local cost at every time step and the final cost. And for every time step, we have the the constraint, the dynamics constraint that we discussed before. Um, the optimal control way to solve the problem is to first define the optimal cost to go function or the value function. Which just uh, uh, which is defined as, as follows, and uh, due to the Bellman uh, principle of optimality, we know that uh, from uh, uh, that uh, if we have if we have the control sequence from the time step t, then so do we have the optimal control sequence from t plus one, and so forth, and uh, this will uh, lead to a dynamic programming uh, solution in the discrete case, and um, in general, what it does is that uh, it uh, so uh, it basically decomposes the whole uh, optimization problem to uh, local sub problems at every time step, and we just have to solve these local sub problems, and then we uh, con uh, consequently solve the, the the whole optimal control problem. And the the typical way to go in discrete time uh, is to use the Bellman equation, uh, which is defined as follows, and uh, we just have to solve this uh, Bellman equation at every time step. However, in general, solving the Bellman equation is uh, an uh, intractable problem uh, because uh, uh, it's it, because of uh, nonlinear dynamics or non quadratic cost functions, and uh, pretty much we pretty much it's a, it's already uh, the the simplest so, simplest version that we can solve is the uh, and the most complex is already the linear dynamics and quadratic cost case. So um, typically, typically, people have to stick with this method. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can use numerical methods uh, such as value iteration, but uh, that's not really a that, that's not really a scalable solution. Um, so again, um, well, what we're going to focus on is uh, uh, the linear quadratic optimal control in the following. Uh, on the other hand, in robotics uh, and in many other related control uh, domains, we have nonlinear systems, and we might have also non-quadratic cost. The question is, what can we do in this case? And you may be want to apply uh, reinforcement learning to solve um, uh, problems without any uh, non-dynamics, or you want to focus on stochastic optimal control or uh, sequential or iterative dynamic programming, uh, if uh, especially in robotics. So there are many, many different ways of solving this problem. And what we're going to focus on, which is particularly useful in robotics, is the, the last one, the iterative dynamic programming. And uh, in, we're going to present uh, a Riemannian uh, formulation of this and show some examples. Um, so as a disclaimer, we're going to focus on trajectory optimization, uh, which means that uh, we want to find the optimal control sequence given my current state. And this is something very similar or even identical to what model predictive control is uh, achieving. Uh, and we won't focus on the optimal regulation problem or optimal feedback control design, but uh, these techniques probably are uh, applicable there too. And uh, we're going to focus on iterative linear quadratic control and we're going to use the differential dynamic programming approach to solve it. So, what is iterative linear quadratic control? The main idea here is that you use a local linearization of your dynamics and quadratization of your cost function uh, around your nominal trajectory. And then you solve the optimal control problem. And then you update the nominal uh, control trajectory. Then you iterate and you iteratively update this trajectory until convergence. 
And uh, the differential dynamic programming uses a, a, a solution uh, defined uh, with differential states. Differential states are nothing else but like the deviation uh, of, uh, from my uh, uh, nominal state trajectory. Uh, and differential states are really good because, if, as you have, as you can imagine, this is something very easy to define uh, with Riemannian manifolds. These are nothing else but uh, uh, basically the log map of anything uh, in, my, in, the, uh, in the current state of the manifold. So this is very suitable for the Riemannian setup, and we can expect that this will work pretty well. Um, and let's see uh, what is the differential state. Uh, in the case of Riemannian manifold, uh, as I mentioned, for the position, this is just a deviation uh, from the, the current state of the manifold, uh, or in other words, the log map. And here I use the x bar as the nominal trajectory. And for velocities, we can define uh, using standard Euclidean uh, difference. And uh, we can also define differential control the same way. And the uh, main iteration loop of iterative linear operative control is to uh, first roll out the nominal control trajectory. Uh, so at uh, iteration k, we have this control trajectory, which uh, we will, we, and we integrate it forward to get the, the nominal state trajectory. And uh, you can see, for example, in, the, in this case, uh, uh, as an example, we have the initial control defined, and then we just roll out the dynamics as we have seen in the previous slides. Then uh, we apply a local linearization of my dynamics model in these differential states. And we also uh, quadratize the cost function. And typically, the cost function is given in already in quadratic form, but uh, yeah, we can also uh, consider the generic case. And then, given this uh, uh, linear quadratic approximation, it turns out the value function will be a quadratic function as well in the differential states. And uh, this way, we can uh, write we, this, this way, we can. Uh, uh, solve the Bellman equation in closed form, which will uh, uh, turn out to be this Riccati recursion, uh, which we probably know from optimal control uh, research. And uh, after we computed uh, the optimal feedback gain and feed forward control, we can update the nominal state trajectory and roll it out again. And we can iterate over this process until we uh, converge to the final uh, trajectory. And you can see uh, an example here. I roll out my trajectory first. After that, I recompute my optimal controls and uh, uh, I move to the next state. Uh, and this is my next trajectory. And slowly but surely, I uh, converge to my uh, solution. Um, so one thing that you can already see from this image is, uh, from this image is that we have a lot of uh, tension spaces everywhere. And again, uh, the main, uh, the key uh, for the computation is to uh, solve the optimal, local optimal uh, problems in local tangent, space, uh, tangent spaces. And uh, this is uh, exactly the, the, the way we will go ahead. And uh, one of the benefits of solving the optimal control in the local tangent spaces is uh, that we, we can, if we define the, the decision variables such as controls in the tangent space, then we can ensure that this will never leave the tangent space. Uh, also, uh, we can do the same for velocities. And in this case, the, we will respect the geometry and still solve the problems. Uh, and in general, we will have to rely again on the parallel transportation to ensure this consistency. And I will show you, I won't go into any details how this how the solution looks like, uh, and you can see it in the software. But one, one, one idea, one example of how this uh, can work out for us. Um, so I, I already mentioned that the value function will be quadratic in states. And we have a linear dynamics approximation. And in this case, this local uh, control sub problem can be written up as a, as a linear in the, in the current state. Uh, and uh, we, can, we can just, and the control as well, and we can solve uh, for the control. But on the other hand, uh, the next uh, value, fu the value function definition at the next state will, be, uh, will exist in the next uh, uh, tangent space. Therefore, variables defined in the next tangent space have to be transported to the current tangent space. So this is a typical step, which is not, which doesn't exist in Euclidean optimal control because there you have basically one tangent space. But in this case, we have to consider that at every time step, uh, we are uh, working in different tangent spaces. Therefore, the parallel transport will be the relevant uh, operation here. And uh, one more notion about the control, uh, of, of, about the cost function uh, for you know, quality control. 
I mentioned that uh, uh, I accuracy can be applied for a generic cost function, but most of the time we have a uh, correct cost and how does it look like in the uh, Riemannian case? And it turns out there is a very easy uh, 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 like transformation of the vector space version of the, of the cost function to the Riemannian version. And uh, uh, first of all, we measure the state deviation again using the logarithmic map. Here you can see my, uh, this is my target state uh, the, and it has its own tangent space and we have some weighing matrix, the Q. And uh, uh, on the other hand, we want to measure the error in my current tangent space. So I use the log map and I also use the, uh, the parallel transport of this weighing matrix so that uh, in the local uh, tangent space, this is uh, consistently rotated. And here you can see it's an ellipse. So you can imagine that the eigenvectors are rotated uh, and have the same angle with respect to the basis. So this is again, an important uh, step in the solution um, to consider uh, this. Uh, we also have, of course, the control cost typically in the construction, but as the control is defined always in my current tangent space, we don't need to transport anything and it's gonna be fine. Um, Okay, and uh, let's see an example uh, for this uh, as well. Um, we will consider the, the same problem as before, making a circle uh, on the manifold. And uh, one of the most important thing that I probably have forgot to mention is that you will need an initial solution uh, for the whole iterative linear quality control. Uh, the initial solution has to be stable and uh, so to speak useful. Uh, and uh, this is often not so easy to find, but in our case, we just use the PD control solution as my uh, first uh, step. And then uh, I start iterating. And uh, in five iteration, you can see I already uh, reach uh, close to optimality. There is not uh, much update in my control anymore. And you can see this theta angle will uh, be very smooth and uh, there is no uh, issues here, even with this uh, large change. Uh, the same, uh, um, which is on the manifold, it's, it's of course not a, not a, it's a, it's a very smooth transition. Um, and the control will be also very smooth and the control will avoid very high uh, control effort because of the quadratic uh, penalty. And uh, over the iterations, all the, the fainter lines are the PD control solution and slowly we converge to the final solid line. That's the, that's the solution uh, for the control and also the velocity becomes uh, much smoother. Okay, and let's see a collab example. How do we implement this? Um, this is the solution. Here we go. Uh, so here what I do is uh, I set up a cost function. This is a quadratic cost uh, for, uh, I will try to hold every uh, waypoint for 250 time step. Uh, I uh, set my, uh, my waypoints on this manifold, these five waypoints. I set up an initial controller, and here I used higher gains to be close to the optimal solution. It's pretty easier for convergence. And um, I set my initial state, uh, and uh, I roll out the, the PD controller to have the first control trajectory. This is important to have. And you don't have to use the PD controller. You can use anything else, but PD controller tends to uh, produce uh, not too bad uh, uh, first uh, results. And uh, then you define the iterative linear quality control uh, using the dynamics, which is the pendulum, the cost function, which is the circle, and I set maximum iteration span. And, uh, uh, and then I start the iteration. And I, as you can see, uh, I start from my initial state and my initial control. And uh, basically we start the optimization. And what you can, usually see is a first large drop in the cost function. Here you can see the cost. And then uh, after this first large drop, we just had some local convergence and uh, the, the solution is, is found. And notice that this is not the fastest algorithm and this is also due to my implementation. Uh, so probably if you use some uh, C++ or something else, you can make it work on your uh, computer faster. And we find the solution after 10 iteration with a minimal uh, control change, and then we can also uh, run the, uh, the, basically the visualization, and you can see I actually started from different states in the slide, but even then we can have a very quick convergence to the optimal solution. Um, so this is kind of like a first example of showing that iterative IQC also works in Riemannian manifolds, and implementation is relatively straightforward. 
uh, as long as you are consistent with the uh, tangent space computation. Uh, then consider uh, now the S2 manifold because I uh, want to convince you that it's useful for more than just pendulum control. And uh, S2 or, or in robotics, the S3 manifold is very relevant uh, representing rotations. Uh, and uh, here I have an example where I projected the IROS, <coughs> the IROS uh, symbols on the, on the S2 manifold on a sphere. <coughs> and the goal is to uh, track uh, certain waypoints to uh, over some time uh, to draw this uh, iris symbol and uh, the optimization works exactly the same way i don't have to change anything just how i define the waypoints and about manifold i'm working on and the uh, estimate manifold is uh, embedded in r3 so we can visualize it in 3d and the local tangent spaces will be r2 uh, so you will have two control signals uh, two dimensional control signals and then you can see the state States are, uh, again, I use the PD controller as initialization and then uh, the iterative accuracy uh, until convergence. And uh, the red one is the PD control solution, and the blue is the smooth one, is the, the optimal control solution. And again, very quickly, we can uh, converge to the solution. And we can also check an example for that. Uh, this is the uh, everything uh, is, is in implementation is, is pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing that is really changing is the, uh, the manifold. So here we use the, the two sphere. Uh, otherwise, the whole implementation of the algorithm is the same. And this is, for example, just the PD controller uh, applied. And you can see it, uh, yeah, it, it provides some solution. And after that, you can use the, the iterative uh, accuracy to arrive at the smooth solution. And we don't have to wait for it. Uh, 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 and uh, one thing to note, uh, I forgot to mention, is that even if you have a linear tension space dynamics and a quadratic cost, even then you won't have a solution in one step. And this is as opposed to the uh, original Euclidean optimal control case, where the where you have only one tension space, then this is uh, this will converge in one step. But in <clears throat> in uh, Riemannian manifolds, this is not the case because of this uh, tension uh, the log map and x map uh, typically uh, introduce some, some non-linearity. So for example, in this case, we need five iterations to converge, and then we can uh, plot uh, this uh, iris on the sphere. Um, and uh, of course, the, the, the solutions for the state similarly. Um, okay, so I, I think I only have uh, 10 minutes left roughly. Uh, but I would like to talk, talk about one more topic uh, in terms of the uh, optimal control. Uh, this is the diverging solutions. Uh, it turns out that uh, the standard iterative IQC uh, using uh, signal shooting or forward integrating the control signals might sometimes lead to an unstable solution. And uh, this is because uh, the local uh, linear quadratic approximations are only valid along the nominal trajectory I have. And after I update my uh, control, uh, I might end up in a very different trajectory. And this is also particularly uh, true for uh, Riemannian manifolds, uh, as due to the tangent spaces are actually rotating and uh, over the trajectory. And this might actually uh, lead you to a very different trajectory. For, for example, here, I choose an example, and I still want to track the IRO symbol, but I start from a very far away state. And in this case, the first few controls will be very large. And I will have high accelerations of velocity, and I might end up in very different uh, tangent spaces where I planned uh, to be ending up. And then it will uh, have this spiraling uh, trajectory, which is, of course, it fails. And you can see after a few iterations, uh, the algorithm uh, doesn't converge anymore. So it seems like this is not so useful after all, but there is a remedy for this. And this is the gross Newton multiple shooting. This is, uh, this is something really useful in robotics. And uh, I collaborated uh, with Marcus Giptaler on this project uh, and uh, we implemented this algorithm on the Riemannian manifolds as well. And the main idea of ghost Newton multiple shooting is to not only, not just forward integrate the whole trajectory, uh, the whole uh, trajectory using my control signals that I plan, but breaking break up uh, the whole trajectory to small segments, even with the uh, uh, segment length one and use forward integration only in this local segment and also 
optimize the states where you want to store these local segments. And then this might seem to be a little bit unintuitive because uh, where my forward integration in the small segments uh, takes me and where I start the next state might be different. And this is true. This, this is often different in the beginning of the optimization, but we have a way to measure it, uh, which is called the defect uh, defined here. Uh, and we can incorporate this in the optimal control uh, uh, definition and the optimal control algorithm. And very similarly, we can solve the same problem uh, as in the uh, as in the IRQC case. Uh, and in the same way, uh, we can define this defect, which is the difference between where I am uh, where I'm optimizing at. So here, for example, every x is non-optimization variable, and uh, we can of course also run, uh, also have to run out the trajectory so that uh, we are consistent with the with the uh, dynamics constraints, and then we can measure this distance between the projection of my of the next uh, decision variable in the current state versus where my uh, dynamics took me, and uh, we can incorporate the signal in the control algorithm. Uh, then in the same way, so what I wanted to highlight just here again, I won't show the exact solution due to time constraint, but the main message here is that you have to decide at which tangent space you decide to execute your computation and uh, uh, make sure to parallel transport whatever needs to be parallel transported. And it turns out that from that very difficult state uh, from the other side of the sphere, if I run the GNMS, the ghost new multiple shooting, then uh, we won't have any diverging solution because uh, uh, we allow for some, some uh, uh, local inaccuracies with the defect. And over time, what you can see here, then here's the defect. Uh, at every time step, and over time, this defect is going down and down. And on average, it also goes down to close to zero. And uh, uh, finally, you can you might ask that hey, and why do you stop already here? Uh, is this enough uh, uh, for convergence? Well, if you just forward integrate the 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 control signals that you have computed, or in other words, single shoot it, uh, and you overlay it with the optimization uh, variables on the, uh, uh, as the, as the, which are the states, then you can see they're exactly covering each other. So this is all the six states, including velocities and positions, and they are uh, covering each other and um, it converges to the final solution uh, correctly. Um, and uh, just as a, as a last uh, uh, slide, uh, I want to show you as well that uh, this whole, whole concept of optimal control doesn't only apply to sphere manifolds, but on other uh, manifolds as well, such as the S2 manifold, and uh, what we have seen before for manipulability optimization. Uh, I have uh, crafted this very small example. Here you can see two target uh, uh, manipulability ellipsoids. One is with red, the other is with green, and we're going to track them over time. And um, this is roughly how it uh, evolves over time. And you uh, can see on the right side, this is the kind of the cost. When the, so we track the first uh, uh, manipulability for uh, two seconds, and then we track the second. And you can see that the cost accordingly goes down smoothly for both. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, and then of course, there are many other uh, examples and, and, and contrary algorithms we could talk about, but using the time constraint, I will stop here. Uh, but as a summary, uh, I would like to uh, highlight that. Uh, it is possible to apply Riemannian computations learned in this tutorial for this discrete time, typically in this discrete time uh, problems. Uh, I have considered in this uh, presentation the finite horizon setup, but again, uh, I think this is easy to apply to the infinite horizon case as well. And the, and the key message here is that uh, you just have to compute, basically revert the computations back to tangent spaces and be consistent with it. Uh, and as you said, as you have seen, it works with uh, any manifold type, at least uh, what we consider in this tutorial, uh, as long as those uh, log X map and the parallel transfer operations are defined. And uh, on the other hand, there is some computational overhead uh, when you have to typically transport these vectors, uh, especially in my implementation. This is not the fastest, but uh, you might want to uh, use some um, manifold uh, uh, toolboxes, uh, which uh, can be much faster. So, when it, so some challenges in open problems. Defining this uh, dynamics in Riemannian manifolds is, is not very straightforward. 
it needs uh, some uh, fiddling around. And especially, uh, we didn't talk today about product of manifolds and uh, and their dynamics, which might be again a little bit uh, trickier. Uh, but this is also an open problem. Uh, I, I didn't find too much research on this topic. Um, so if you're interested, uh, please feel free. So thanks for your uh, attention. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, Andros, for the very nice talk. So are there any questions? Yeah, please. Yeah, thank you for nice talk. So I'm, I'm also interested in this, uh, the application of Riemannian manifold for control. But so main point is to how to evaluate the error to feedback. So if you evaluate the error in manifold, I think yeah, it's better uh, to you know, it, or utilize the error information. But sometimes it also can be uh, equivalent to gain decision. So like scaling the error is also same as gain decision. So sometimes this uh, the application of Riemannian manifold can be considered a little bit trivial because it is equivalent to gain decision problem. What do you think about this? Um, I think this is this is a very good point. Uh, I, I I typically approach these problems as uh, from the directly from the stars from the Riemannian case. Um, but uh, I have to uh, to be honest. Like I, I didn't really think, think about this before, but I think this is this is definitely true. And just just to let you know, there are also many different ways of of treating these these problems. Uh, this is just of some very specific, uh, I think, to the robotics domain. Um, so yeah. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So because this is, I think, very interesting and the fundamental point. So if you have some answer, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, please share and maybe next. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the point. It's a good one. 